Bruce Lipton, this week we're really discussing emotion and trauma and fatigue, but behind all of that is what we talked about last week, which is stress. And there are other aspects from what we talked about to stress that you wanted to bring in this, this week. It's a very important aspect because last time we talked about how stress influences the blood flow and the body, blood being the energy source, and that under stress hormones, blood is sent to the periphery and we, we close the blood vessels in the gut. Which is that sort of butterflies in the stomach. The butterflies feeling. in the stomach, but that means while you're in stress, fight or flight mode, you're not really encouraging growth and maintenance of the body, okay? But now there's another second factor of stress that is as important, if not more important, and that is this. There are actually two protection systems in the body. The adrenal system is protection from threats on the outside, but what we call the immune system protects me from threats on the inside. Well, now we have an issue. I, I have two environments to protect, something on the outside and something gets me on the inside, bacteria, viruses, uh, you know, cancer cells, whatever. And, I and say, the oh. adrenals can get us away in our perception from the outside, from the saber-toothed tiger. The, the adrenal gets us into us fight or flight, but yes. the adrenal system also does this. Because now let me just say something about the immune system. Remember, because the whole idea of the adrenal system, allocate all the energy to go to the arms and legs so I can run away from a saber-toothed tiger. And I say, yeah, but some systems of the body use a tremendous amount of energy. The immune system. You say, the immune system? I say, yeah. You ever get sick? I say, yeah, you couldn't get out of bed. <laughs> you were weak. You were tired. You were run down. Why? The immune system uses a very large quantity of energy to fight infection. So much energy that a lot of people, as I said, feel so tired and weak because of it. And I say, well, okay, well, now let's take a situation. I have a bacterial infection, maybe causing let's say diarrhea. It's like, wow, I don't like that, so I want my immune system to fight it. But at the same time, all of a sudden, I'm being chased by a saber-toothed tiger. Well, now, if you're controlling energy in the body, if you're the brain and you're gonna control energy, I would say, how much energy do you wanna put in, energy do you wanna put in to fight the bacteria? And what percent of energy do you wanna to use to run away from the saber-toothed tiger? In, in the hierarchy of needs, I need to get away from the tiger. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I mean, this, the result is simply funny because uh, uh, if the tiger catches you, the bacteria is no longer a problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so basically, what's the point is this. When the stress hormones from the adrenal system are in, they're acknowledging that the threat is coming from the outside. To allocate 100% of the energy possible into the system, stress hormones shut down the immune system. The reason is, is because if the immune system kicks in and starts using up my energy and I'm trying to run away from the tiger and I'm just short that last amount of energy to get my ankle out of that tiger's mouth, I'm a goner. So the biology is simple and profound. It says you're running from a tiger, 100% of the energy goes into the tiger, which means then other systems, including the gut, which is maintenance of the body, but the immune system, high energy usage system, the stress hormone inhibit that function. Now you said last week that's okay for a short run from a saber-toothed tiger about a thousand years ago or however long when we could rest afterwards. Yeah. Translate it to modern day life. Bruce. Well, translate it to modern day life is chronic fear means you're shutting down growth and maintenance and you're still losing 100 billion cells a day whether you're being chased by something real or not. Chronic fear might be the person who is stressed at their work or stressed the mother at work who's stressed at work because home. anything that uh, compromises your life or your, your life's destination is gonna cause stress. And so basically I say, yes, that the stress hormones also inhibit the immune system because it's, it uses so much energy. I can't afford to have an immune reaction. So I say, well, what does it mean? I say, well, basically it says when you're in stress, you shut down the immune system. I go, well, what's the consequence of that? And I go, hey, the five or 10 minutes to run away from a saber-toothed tiger is not a problem. But if you shut down your immune system and it goes on for hours and days, well, then that means, well, my goodness, you're, you, you know, you're being contaminated by all kinds of viruses, bacteria, parasites, and stuff all day long. And the idea is if you shut down the immune system, then you have compromised yourself and you're no longer defensive. And that's why stress leads to illness, A, because you're not maintaining the body, that will cause illness, and B, you have lost the protection system inside the body because it's on hold waiting for you to be out of stress which means that if there's something in my body like a virus or a cancer cell, it's free to do whatever it wants because the immune system is on hold. Let me just say, emphasize how powerful 
is stress and shutting down the immune system, medical doctors give patients that they want to transplant an organ like a kidney or a heart into a person. And because it's foreign tissue, the recipient of this organ, their immune system is going to aggressively remove the, the transplant. Well, I don't want the transplant removed. So the doctor, before transplanting the organ, gives the patient stress hormones. And by giving them stress hormones, then they can put the organ in while the immune system is being inhibited so that there's no reaction against the graft. That's interesting. And that just, what it really emphasizes is how powerful is a, a stress hormone in regulating the immune system. It's so powerful that it's therapeutic in a sense of specifically intending to shut down the immune system to protect the transplanted organ. And John, stress is a huge part of the client base yeah, that, that yeah, you have. People yeah, are yeah. exhausted and people are not knowing how to cope. Can yeah, you talk about that? The word stress and the word disease, I mean exactly the same thing. Disease, stress, same thing. So that's basically where we start. And we try to, you know, obviously lifestyle modica modifications are important, dealing with trauma, toxins, the various thoughts, all that are interrelated. So you have many clients and who are under stress who come in with these free well, ranging toxins in their body everybody's because they're dealing with stress. Suppressed. Obviously yeah. it's how well you manage it. Yes. And so you're managing it well, your brain's functioning more effectively because you're then sending signals out to reproduce the various chemical or you know to produce the chemicals that are necessary to enhance the immune system. So it's a whole interrelated perspective and this is where we have you know our discussion on gut, heart, head brain. Yes. You know, the integrated systems, because they're signaling each other the whole time through hormones and Wi-Fi systems. So this, the body's very perfectly important. designed to deal with all of these issues, but we have to manage our lifestyle, and we have to manage our thoughts, our relationships, our belief systems. Our nutrient levels, nutrient our levels, health. All yeah. that, yeah. yeah. And and that's that's very, yeah it's is. very critical, because the ultimate top control is up here mm. in the brain. And I can, with my mind, create any illness including death from a belief only, a a as much as everyone knows a positive thought and a placebo influence is, oh, it was the positive thought that healed me, not this drug, because it turns out the drug was a sugar pill. And then I say, well, if the drug didn't heal you, what healed you? And the answer was my belief that the drug was going to heal me. And I go, everybody's aware of that, and I say, that's really great, but just to close this up, and most important, is a placebo effect is based on having a positive thought. But nobody talks about what is the consequence of a negative thought. It's like it's equally powerful in affecting the body, but in the opposite direction. It's given a name in medicine called nocebo versus placebo. And placebo, positive thought, healing, sugar pill, I can heal with a thought. Nocebo, negative belief, can cause any illness and can cause death as well. Nothing physically wrong with the body, just a belief. So when you see John and people that are working in this holistic energy field, it's like, yeah, I can treat the body, but I also have to have you understand the nature of your consciousness because it's the ultimate control of your biology. Thank you, Bruce. And we did refer to a book earlier, Spontaneous Evolution and the Biology of Belief and the Honeymoon Effect, all books by Bruce Lipton, who will be back with us next week. I look forward to it. Thank, Thank you, you. Bruce.